Europe and the rest of Western world, America, including African Christian and African nations, they, they will forget this struggle. The next generation will forget uh, what we are struggling against in 21st century. Uh, uh, if Christ doesn't tarry, this struggle of good versus evil, the force of darkness versus the force of, uh, force of light, God versus Satan will continue. Islam versus the rest of us. Islam versus Christianity and Judaism is going to continue. And if the way things are being conducted as it is, these nations will not survive Islam. There's no way we can survive this menace. When I was a student in 1990, um, you know, uh, this was right at the collapse of the Soviet Union and America assuming the sole po superpower uh, position. And I say this to, I wrote, I wrote an article to my professors who want to give, uh, get a worldview on what will happen after the breakup of Soviet Union. I say, don't worry about Soviet Union. Ed. The war we're going to be fighting is the war of Islamic Jihadism. They are the one going to be, the, they are going to one, they are the one going to, Islam is going to start the Third World War because they, they will not rest until they recover or they go back to the Mohammedans' plan to conquer the world with Islam. And now fast forward about 25, 30 years later, that pretty much is happening. It's happening. So what is the strategy? The West has no strategy. Now, the progressive church in America, unfortunately, ha uh, has become socially engineered. We are now embracing worldliness into our midst. Let's say without even Islamic presence and manners, we could collapse from within. We could collapse from within because we are following the way of the world. Who will have imagined in, in any wildest dream that the church, any group that called themselves the Church of Christ, anyone who mentioned the name of Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and if knowing that Jesus is the head of the church, will embrace homosexuality. But that is becoming now something that the church in America, a number of churches have embraced that. You think about abortion, the rate of killing babies, even in the church, is astronomical. The home front is broken. Two parents working in workforce. Children are no longer needed in the society. People don't want children anymore. And those who are being born, maybe one and a half by family or two at most, are driven to public school system which is a potentially a godless system. It brainwashes our children, turning them against their own family, turning them against their father, their mother, and their social engineer to embrace lifestyle that is being uh, abomination according to scripture. And they, they, they are the very people who will become, who will deserve political office, who will become pastors, who will become the leaders of what so-called free world. And therefore, these are the very people who are saying, it's okay. President planned to bring uh, 10,000 Syrian refugees here without uh, need to worry about embedding Islamic terrorists among them. Let them come here. This is the land that America cannot afford to reject refugees. I say, absolutely, it's a bogus argument. And because when they come in here, we can't even evangelize to them. We can't even evangelize to them. We can't even evangelize to our own. You know, Christian children go to school. Uh, they, they say they, they are Christian, but in a few years' time, they turn against the church. So these are the very people who are embracing the so-called multiculturalism. Multiculturalism. You know, this, this is a re an era where coming close to the Tao Bible, where people have one language, have one idea, want to build this big tower, they want to reach God. It's a humanism. They want to be God themselves. And God conformed their strategy, and God discarded them abroad. But we Christians, true Christians, 
to be humble, to, to build the church of Jesus Christ on his foundations, and to be led by the Holy Spirit to obey the scripture, and to embark on the Great Commission. But if we pull our children out to the expert to teach them, and to, to abdicate our responsibility as parents, and embark on projects and, and program in the church that basically put the pastors and other people in charge of our children, whereas the role of the pastor is to equip the saint for the workmanship of God. But now we all have be, the nation, nation will become enslaved by our own want. And because of that, we don't see Islamic encroachment. Those who have gone before us and have, have preserved our faith so that these, these people will too come to the knowledge of the full knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, and I repeat, this is singular and this is exclusive biblical statement, right? That Jesus is the way, he's the truth, he's the life. Nobody come to the Father except through him. So that those who say they're going to do good to get to heaven, they won't. Because Yeshua is the way, the truth, and life. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. So this, is, this must be the message we must teach. But how can we teach it when we are political correct? Our churches are doing the same thing the world is doing. So, um, number one, a number of people came to me in the past couple of weeks. Uh, they want me to share my experience dealing with uh, Muslims and uh, those who don't believe in Jesus Christ. And that menace us. How do we go about them? I say... And I will continue to say, definitely all, all human race are living in sin. And there's no a group of people born, uh, who are born without sin. But when we recognize our sin and repent from our ways, God is just and he forgive our sin and restore us. And it's only through Jesus Christ that our sin will be forgiven. And if Jesus Christ set an example for us. Christian fundamentalism is not Islamic jihadism. It's not Islamic fundamentalism. These are two different things. Christian fundamentalism drives us towards uh, the love of God and the love of our neighbors and embarking on being the witness to advance the Great Commission. And we are following in the footsteps of the disciple. They follow the step of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ laid his life for us so that we may have eternal life. So every Christian uh, who is truly a believer in Jesus Christ, the logical conclusion of his faith leads him to humility, to godliness, and to embark on the Great Commission. So in all of this, I will say that uh, with what I've shared about South Sudan, the, the, the Polish borders, the work of Operation Yemaya, the Islamic menace in this country, in Europe and people ask asking for solution how did you do it my answer is, is simple the judgment of God begins with the in the house of God it starts with us so we need to get our act together as a church in America I can speak for the government but I know we can pray for the the true leaders in those you um, in that uh, branch of uh, God, God's institution, we pray for the church. There are remnant here, pastors who are teaching the word of God, and they are, we pray for them. I pray for families, the role of the fathers in the home, to disciple their own children. And be bold and courageous to witness to Muslims. But you cannot witness to people if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit and you are not saved and you are living kind of life, it's not going to work. And they and understand, our warfare is not against blood and flesh. It is spiritual. And the Bible says it's not by might, it's not by strength, it's not by power, it's by the Spirit. You cannot have the Spirit of God unless you obey the Word of God, Jesus Christ. And that's how we're going to fight this warfare. Let's get our home together. That's the temple of the living God. And no, and no weapon that form against us will prosper. That is our hope, and that's the victory. Amen.